And here's just a few of the names that came to me in the last five minutes in this tabernacle going back a few years when I was 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, coming to the, uh, the Wisconsin camp. I remember the name Davis, the name Ellis, Ernest Mackey. Good to see Sister Mackey. Jack Yance, Ted Barnett. Give me an amen if you know these people. The Wasmans, Tanbergs, Bridges, Ben Urshan, John Grant, William Siscos, G.A. Mangans, Frank Muncy's, Buckley's, Putnam's, Caskey's, the Dale Aarons, the Kleppers, the Gleasons, Brother Thompson, the Rogers, the Welches, the Winarchics, the Lehmans, the Grays, Vernon Johnson, Kelsey Griffin, Lewis Manuel, Hildebrands, Bookers, and I know I've missed 200 more, so if you're not offended, clap your hands to the Lord. Now, don't put me on your timer yet. I just want a moment of introduction. You've heard all week this is the year of Jubilee. How many believe it? Does anybody believe that makes it a different year? Does anybody believe it's a special year? Does anybody believe God can do more in the Jubilee year than any year of the campground history? He gave us the principles of this in Leviticus. It was the time of Nehemiah. And God does these things. I looked it up today. God does these things in Jubilee that he does at no other time. Give a hand clap for that music tonight, those old timers. This great old Pentecostal music, when you can understand the words. The great nation of Israel was bombarded and destroyed by the Nazi army and Hitler after Israel became a sovereign nation in one day. America came to its aid. And they became the nation of Israel again. Fifty years later, it took 50 years. The Swiss banks in Switzerland opened up their vaults. The Nazis had put Jewish treasure, melted down gold from teeth, and ripped off treasures from Jewish homes. And it took 50 years, but the Swiss banks opened up their gold and opened up money that had much interest on it. It was released to Jewish grandchildren and Jewish great-grandchildren that it rightly belonged to. It took 50 years, but it happened. It was in your newspaper. Clap your hands for that tonight. In Leviticus, the Bible says, all debts would be released, all captives set free. Oh, God. All slaves will be released. All business transactions in the red shall be forgiven. Can you say amen? And then God promised a heritage given back to our children. Let's praise God for our children and our grandchildren that are going to come out in the next generations in the Wisconsin camp. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Now, tomorrow night, everybody say tomorrow night. We're going to have a Holy Ghost downpouring of the glorious Spirit of God. People are going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost in fire. Maybe we'll find a church close by and baptize them in Jesus' name. You all for that? Tomorrow night is Holy Ghost night. I feel absolutely bulldog courageous, full of faith in the Holy Ghost tonight. I've spent all day in my room. I haven't done anything. I haven't fooled around. I've just been with the Lord. But my wife told me to tell you this. I've got a strong back. I'm not, a, I'm not pitching a pity party. I've I'm, I'm, got energy. I play racquetball. I play baseball. I play golf. I've got a good back. But I heard it. I heard it getting on the plane coming here. And it's been killing me since I got here. I finally got to a chiropractor today here in Shano. 
And I told him the problem. He put me on the table. He worked on me for an hour and a half today. He really gave me therapy. And he says, now what is it that you do? I said, St. John's Road tonight. I'm preaching a camp meeting. There'll be over a thousand people there. You need to come. And he says, all right, how long are you going to preach? Because your back's pretty bad. I said, about 40 minutes. He said, I'll tell you what you do. Now you listen to your doctor. You lean on the pulpit. You put one foot up on some song books and release the tension from your spine. I looked at him. You know, you're supposed to obey what the doctor says. My wife says he doesn't know an apostolic camp meeting. <laughs> Hallelujah! What a beautiful crowd tonight. God wants to be busy blessing everybody in this building tonight in the next few minutes. How many are going to agree with me you're going to obey the Holy Ghost? Just by faith. Just by faith. Hallelujah. I love to preach the gospel. I love to preach the word of the Lord. God has given me a direction tonight. It's Jubilee year. I'm not afraid of it. And we're going to let God have his way in this place. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6. I'm going to ask Brother Putnam. We went back. We went to the United Pentecostal Church headquarters today. The Mart of the Beast, Walmart. And picked these up. There's six of them. He's going to put two on each side of the platform and two in the front. Hallelujah. And uh, if you'll do what I say tonight, God is going to be busy blessing you. He is going to be your buddy. You're going to be in tight with God. I promise you. If you disagree with me tonight, you're going to hurt yourself. Everybody say praise the Lord. I'm going to preach tonight the key the dynamic living is dynamic giving. The key, oh, not another offering. No, this is not another offering. The key to dynamic living is dynamic giving. Hallelujah. Brother Kasky, I'm going to need you on the platform tonight. You can't sit back there. Brother Lehman, I'm going to need you on the platform tonight. Get a microphone. Missionary Robinson. Get on the platform tonight. You're going to need a microphone. Hallelujah. And I'm going to ask you to untrain yourself tonight. Praise God. Look me right in the baby greens, would you? Folks, irregardless of every promotion and everything going on in the campground, there is a need tonight that's huge. This camp could use, it could use $20,000. But it critically has to have $10,000 before we leave this building tonight. Smile about it. You've heard the old cliche, well, the bad news is we don't have, the, what the good news is we have the money. We have the money. The bad news is it's still in your pocket. Hallelujah. We're going to turn apostolic one God Pentecostal tonight. What we do tonight is going to affect the next generation. What we do tonight is going to affect the Holy Ghost night. What we do tonight is going to affect your descendants. And before you leave the building, are you listening? Everybody say amen. I don't care if you're a sinner, a backslider, or a child. Before we leave the building tonight, while I'm preaching, while I'm preaching, if you believe the Word of God and what I'm saying, you mix your faith with the Word of God and walk down here if you're physically able and you give God a jubilee offering. This is a jubilee offering tonight. This is a jubilee offering tonight. This is a jubilee offering tonight. This is 50 years of appreciation of what God has done in Shawano, Wisconsin. Halabo shatalaba. I feel the Holy Ghost about this tonight. I'm excited, Brother Lehman. I'm telling you, I feel in the Holy Ghost tonight. Hatabako shatalaba. I want you to walk down, not at the end of my message. I'm talking about when I'm preaching. Hallelujah. Brother Soto, 
give them, give them an example. I'm preaching right now. Walk down here. Walk down here. You don't have to give an offering. Just, just show them. Show them how. He steps out. He steps out. I'm preaching away. I'm not worried about him. I'm preaching away. And he walks down. And he puts an offering in. Hallelujah. Give Brother Soto a hand. He's a good man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you're too old, if you're old, if you're too old to move and you can't get up and you've got arthritis, that's that's okay. There's folks here 98 years old in this building tonight. That's what this young guy's for. You're gonna take one of those buckets and walk around while I'm preaching. You're gonna walk around, Brother Lehman, you're gonna walk around a little bit and just get some exercise and, and look for people to say, I want to give. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? You ready to go? Are you ready to go? Okay, the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. Get your smile on. Come on, everybody. Some of you look like you kissed a Missouri mule. Come on. If you have the joy of the Lord in your heart, please notify your face. Turn to two or three, two or three people and smile at them, would you? Hallelujah. There's a joy in giving that I've found to be true. Not yet. I'm not preaching yet. Here they come. So give till you can't give anymore. Give more than you can afford. And you'll find your cup will overflow because you can't out give the Lord. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. You need to hear a little bit of preaching before you come. Would you give me about 10 minutes? Hallelujah. Give me about 10 minutes. We need $10,000 for sure tonight, Elder. We got to have it in this building tonight. So one misgiving is not going to make it. George Washington won't get the job done tonight. Lincoln won't get the job done tonight. I'm going to just cover the whole audience and say this before other folks come. Don't come anymore, please. I want, this is awesome. I thank you for your response. But I want children to come first. In the next 10 minutes, I want you to make sure every child in this building, every child, if they don't have an offering, grandpa, grandma, uncle, mom, and dad, you put an offering. If it's a nickel or a dime or a quarter, you put an offering in a child's hand and send them down here for a jubilee offering. And after that happens, then the adults can come. But we need some people tonight. There's folks in this building. If the Lord will speak to you and you'll, you'll hear the Holy Ghost, you can give $1,000 tonight. There are pastors that can give $500 from your church. We're going to even let you post date a check for one week from now. You can post date it for one week from now. But we're going to see the Lord do something. Now, those of you that have already lost the Holy Ghost and thought, here we are for another offering, open up your heart in Jesus' name right now, 2 Corinthians 9 and 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly, everybody say sparingly, will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one of us give as you purpose in your heart, not with an attitude, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a... <laughs> a hilarious giver. He loves a fun giver. He loves a ha-ha giver. And God is able. Look at me, folks. Look at me. Everybody say, God is able. God is able in your church. God is able in your family. God is able in your home. God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. The key to dynamic living is dynamic giving. Clap your hands to the Lord, everybody. Clap your hands. You may be seated. Now, if you want to write a check of $100 or more, you bring it up here. It won't bother me at all. Brother Lehman will call your name out. Brother Johnson gave $100, and we'll worship. we'll worship. We'll do it We'll do it through my whole sermon. We'll worship. $500. Hallelujah. Racine Church gave $1,000. 
Praise God. We'll call it out and we'll rejoice. This is Jubilee. Let's have fun tonight. Clap your hands again to the Lord. Clap your hands again. The writer in Corinthians, Paul to the Corinthian church says, when the Holy Ghost talked to him, that God is setting your gauge. The Lord Jesus Christ said, you respond and you establish the result. If you sow sparingly, excuse me, if you're cheap, you will reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, that's a beautiful word, you will reap bountifully. Not grudging, not have to, not because someone made me, but cheerfully with a smile, I give to God and God begins to work a dynamic in my life. He is able to make all grace abound toward me. Dynamic living comes from dynamic giving. Everything in the world becomes more enjoyable when you love to give and you begin to give. Especially when you learn to give. Somebody needs a revelation here tonight. Giving is the safest, most truest investment left on the planet earth tonight. Mark chapter 10 and verse number 28. If they would put that up behind me. Then Peter, here's the apostle. You know, they're just like anybody else. Those apostles and disciples wanted to know what's in it for me if I live for God. What's in it for me if I quit fishing? All I've known is fishing. My mother-in-law told me, you better take care of my babies. And she wants to know what the deal is to serve Jesus Christ. And he said, Lord, tell me, we've left all. We've given up everything and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, verily or certainly, I say unto you, there is no man, there is no human being that has left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. Now look at this. But he shall receive a hundredfold now. In this lifetime, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. It's part of living for God and then the world to come eternal life. The Bible says when you give to God with the right joyous attitude and you do it unto the Lord for his kingdom, he says he's going to multiply it by a hundredfold and give it back to you in this lifetime. If you believe that, say amen. amen. He didn't say in heaven. He didn't say after the rapture. He said in this lifetime. You want to live longer? You don't want to die tomorrow? i tell you a good way to stay alive. Start giving to God joyfully. The Lord is not going to let you die and owe you one penny. He's going to pay his side of the bargain. You want to stay alive? Start giving lavishly to God. And God will keep you alive because he promised you a hundredfold. He promised you a hundredfold in this lifetime. God is not in debt to any man. But the book of Malachi chapter 3 and 7. He said, return unto me, O Wisconsin camp, it's Jubilee. Return unto me, and I will return unto you. And then he said in Malachi 3.10, try me. Try me now. me now. If I, the Lord God, will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Listen to the word of the Lord. That Prior out of the blessing, he said, there shall not be room enough to receive it. God, here you go, Doc. God knows no boundaries to the man and the woman of a giving spirit. There is no boundary. Just a visitor needs a ride to come to church. And that visitor, hallelujah to God, they don't know Jesus. They don't know a thing about God. And you've had a bad day at work. God bless you, sir. And you come walking into your garage and take your car. And you go pick up that visitor. And it's 20 miles of the way. And you're stressing yourself out to take him to church. I serve a God tonight that knows what you pay in all state every month. He knows what you paid for your good years. And he knows what your payment is on your Ford. Fix or repair daily. 
and God sees you picking up that precious soul and taking them to the house of God, I'm telling you, my God sees your sacrifice. It's not just about money. It's about souls. It's about people. It's about eternity. It's about things. Our God is a great God. Hallelujah. God will bless your effort. 2 Corinthians 10, 17 says, He who glories, let him glory in the Lord of heaven. Unthankfulness is a sin. I'm going to say it over and over till everyone gets it tonight. We need 100% of every person in this building. This is very important. Total unanimity. Total one-page effort. Everybody gives an offering tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Where's my coat? I got a $50 bill. Hallelujah. I want that $50 bill. That stands for Jubilee. I'm putting it in. I'm going to mix my faith with the word of God. I'm going to mix my seed faith right now. Hallelujah. We need some 50s. We need some 100s. We need some $500 bills. We've got to get a hold of $10,000 tonight. And I know God's going to meet the need. Clap your hands again because you believe it. This is America's success. Since 1948, America has helped Israel. We've helped third world countries. We've gone to every disaster from tsunamis to earthquakes, famines. We're blessed as a nation because we give to the poor and we give to the down and the out. Stats tell it so well. Listen, folks, look at me, watch me. According to the World Bank, we have enough food right now. This is the World Bank food market. We have enough food right now in the World Bank to feed the six billion people on the planet Earth for 30 days. We can feed the Earth's population for 30 days. That's it, one month. 26 third world nations last year averaged less than $1,000 per person income for the year. Based on an additional 28 nations, it was less than $1,800 income. What do you make? What do you make? What is your income? What do you make a year? I'm talking about millions of people that are making $1,800 for the whole year. I've been to Thailand five times and preached there, and I meet those little Thai people. They make five American dollars a day, and they're thankful, and they're grateful, and they work 12 hours in the sun. And you can complain tonight and you can murmur tonight and say what a pity party you got and how bad you're going through it. The Philippines, Asia, I've met them by the thousands who make $5 an hour and they live in shacks. According to the World Bank, two-thirds of the world's population has had an increase of about a dollar a year per capita, per capita going in a gain in the last 10 years while your income has greatly, greatly increased. Oh, yes, it has. You live in the United States of America. In 1988, I was pastoring in Indianapolis, Indiana. I went and bought a 1988 Delta Oldsmobile. It had powder blue velour. It had Merle Ewing on, on the 8-track. Remember the old 8-track? Merle Ewing was singing, You're Going to Make It. Hallelujah. That big old beautiful car with climate control and air conditioning and all the stuff you'd ever want in a car cost me $7,400. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? Man, I thought that was a great buy. $7,400 for my 1988 Oldsmobile. I bought two years ago in 19 or two, 10,008, I bought a new, I got a hold of a new red maroon Chrysler, 300. You know what that cost? That cost $28,000. Do the math. 7,400, 7,400, 7,400. It cost me, cost me $28,000. I'm still able to buy the car. I'm still able to get all the stuff on the car. I'm still blessed. I'm still got a home. I still have clothes on my back. I still am serving a great God. Would somebody say praise the Lord tonight? God is good. God is good. One out of five people go to bed nightly with no food, the lack of clean water to drink, unsanitized living conditions. Haiti, Korea, Ethiopia, Sudan, East Africa, India, our American cows. I used to read a, 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 a sign in the Wisconsin Dells. We get, our, we get our milk from contented cows. 
They ought to be contented cows. This was back in the 60s. The reason they're contented is the cows in America consume more food than literally almost a billion people in the world. In the book, According to Awakening the American Dream by Rufus Miles, you should be ashamed for murmuring and complaining. You should be ashamed when we take an offering for the Lord Jesus Christ and you find yourself complaining about it. Lack of sanitation and clean water and dysentery kills over 30,000 people people worldwide daily according to the U.S. Council on Environmental Control. The key to dynamic living where it transforms your life and transforms your future and your path. It's giving dynamically or giving with a purpose for the kingdom of God. If you look at Acts chapter 2, 41 through 47 behind me, it says they gladly received his word, and they were baptized. And the same day the Lord added unto them about 3,000 souls. But it goes on to tell us, hallelujah, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, and in fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And the Lord added daily, fear came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs. You say we want revival? Do we really want revival? Well, then we want miracles, signs, and wonders. We want God to be God. But it all came about because people began to give. If you look at Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 through 35, I said that God said in the text, he is able to make great grace come upon you. And it says great grace came upon them. They witnessed the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and they sold their possessions and goods and they laid them at the feet of the apostles. Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. Praise Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your body. It's not just I give. It's not just my wallet and my purse. I'm giving myself tonight. I'm giving my body tonight. I'm giving my temple tonight. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living temple unto the Lord Jesus Christ, which is your reasonable service. Everybody say reasonable service. It doesn't say unreasonable. It doesn't say too much. Hallelujah. I'm sorry to hurt your feelings. Forgive me in advance. But you didn't do God any big favors coming to this campground tonight. You didn't do God any big favors because you lifted your hands and you worshiped God and you gave a little bit in the offering. Who is the one that set you free? Who is the one that saved you from hell? Who is the one that shed his blood? Who is the one that died on Calvary? Who is the one that was resurrected from the dead? Who is the one that went to hell to get the keys of death in the grave? Oh, somebody ought to realize tonight, I'm not anything, but Jesus Christ is everything. I owe him my all. We're not really that big a deal. Little hank of hair, little skin. Little epidermis, we're not worth much. We're worth something because of Jesus Christ. And the word reasonable is where we get in the Greek the word logical, where you get the word logic. This is logical. Now, I find being a Muslim not logical. I'm talking about in a Muslim world, you got to study the Quran. If someone steals your Tootsie Roll, you cut off their arm. If somebody does something else, you cut their head off. You take their head off their body. You love everybody if they're only a Muslim. And uh, you, you do all kinds of things. Infidels, jihad, 5,000 moons. I don't think that's a very logical religion. But I think the logical religion is the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God is so good to us. God is so good to me. God is so good to you. I'll tell you something right now. Sister Buckley, hallelujah, if, I blew it, hallelujah. Sister Hildebrand, I want to tell you something. If the Lord would not be sneaky about it in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in an hour that you think not, if he would tell us tomorrow morning at 12 noon, after John Grant finishes this wonderful Bible lesson, a trumpet is going to sound. 
And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Jesus is coming tomorrow at 12 noon. If he would tell us that, Brother Grant, you talk about a crowd here tomorrow. They would be out there another 5,000 feet trying to get in the building. And not only that, you would be amazed at what you could give tonight. If you knew Jesus was coming tomorrow morning, you would be shocked what you're able to give in this service tonight. God, open up the vicissitudes of my heart. God, open up the spirit of my soul. God, help me to feel the word of the Lord tonight. I worship, I sing, I praise, I give, I stand. It's no big, big, big favor. It's reasonable. It's logical. Hallelujah. God is looking for someone to be two-mile people in a one-mile world. God is looking, hallelujah, for somebody to go beyond the routine. I always give a dollar. I always give two dollars. I always give a five. I always give a 20. Jesus stood at the treasury, and he looked at everyone that came, and there's three things that he gave us a hint, hint on. He said, when you pray, because he expected us to pray, and he said, when you fast, because he expected us to fast. And then he said, when you give, he just knew that we would give. He just knew it would come from a heart, that we would logically be a ha-ha giver, and it would be the joy of our soul, even at the tough economy, because we know what God can do. Sometimes it doesn't mean money. It's how you live your life. When God sees a dynamic giving plan in your life and you fit to that plan, God's honoring and blessing upon you is going to be limitless. The Gentiles, the Americans, the Washington philosophy, climb your way to the top, look out for number one, step on your brother. This is not God's way. God's way is for the kingdom. God's way is unselfish. Luke 6, 38, the gospel says, give and, have you ever quoted this before? Give and it shall be given unto you. Correct. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. What's the last part of it say? Shall God give into your bosom. Hallelujah. Through men. For with the same measure that you give, God will give it back to you. Wait a second, wait a second. The same measure. Correct. If I give it a measure like this, I'm going to get a measure like this. That's what he said. But if I measure it outside the tabernacle... I can start counting my blessings for the next Jubilee service. That's true. That's what he it's said. It's going to go down the road a long time. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord with what measure you meet, with what measure you measure. It's going to be measured back to you again. You cannot possibly outgive God. His shovel is bigger than yours. When you give him a shovel, he gives you a wheelbarrow. He's the almighty God. He's able to make great grace come towards you. I've believed in dynamic giving all of my life. And believe me, God has been there and blessed me and given me a dynamic life. God will turn right around and he'll give you 10 times. He'll give you 50 times. He'll give you 100 times what you have sowed into the kingdom with a good spirit. Oh, 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 that doesn't mean tomorrow morning you're going to go home to the Wisconsin Dells and there'll be a check in the mailbox tomorrow at 10 o'clock for $10,000 because you gave $1,000 tonight. But God knows exactly when to give it. God knows exactly how to give it. God is going to give it to you because he is an amazing God. God will outthink you. God will outplan you. God is bigger than you. And that's why giving is so wonderful because giving is personal. It's so good. It, it, it has to cost you something. It's part of you. 1 Corinthians 16, 2. Let every one of you, every one of us, every one of us, I hope those people out there with the babies tonight, I hope those people looking in, you'll get in the offering. Every child, every baby, every person, every person back in the tent, we need 100% total cooperation of everybody given tonight. Everybody with all of your heart in it. It's so important because everything that God controls, if it resists giving, it's not of God. If it resists giving, it's not from God. The clouds give the rain. The rain gives to the ground. 
The ground gives seed. The seed gives to the shoot. The shoot gives to the plant. The plant gives to the grain. The grain gives us meal. The meal gives us bread. The bread gives us life. The farmer then plows in hope, and the sun shines again, and it goes back to a new cycle. These are principles of the Almighty God. This is what we need to learn. God, if we ever could learn how to live by this, that we would quit suffering in our life. I was 25 years old, pastoring in Indianapolis. The building at 902 Fletcher Avenue was jam-packed. Brother Urshan left an amazing congregation to be our general superintendent. There was nothing else to do but build a new church. We stepped out by faith. The church had a great track record of, of, of good banking procedures over the years. Saved a couple hundred thousand dollars. And the scary part was the board had never heard the word million. We're going to build 120,000 square feet. And it's going to cost $1.7 million. It scared the board members to death. I didn't know any better. I hadn't done anything in my life. I'm 25. And we stepped out to build. It took a complete, total volunteer army to build the church. We dug a hole a block long to put the footers in. The Indiana National Bank said, yeah, we're going to be there for you. We're going to be there all the way. We worked a month on putting in the footers and start putting in the cement wall. And you know what happened, folks? I'm telling you. The money ran out. The $200,000 was gone. I went to the bank to get the loan. And the bank manager said, Reverend Larson, you know the economy has suddenly soured in the last few months and we've had to foreclose on a few businesses and churches are pretty shaky. I'm sorry, but we can't give it to you. Now, I, I remember the day, Brother Aaron, I walked out of that bank absolutely defeated. We've already dug the hole. We've already spent the money. Oh, we're talking faith and vision. There's nothing else we could do. I went to the people and said, we got two semis coming in this week, and it's got stuff, and we're not going to... We're not going to be able to do a thing unless we pay for this material. And we just took pledges and we took folks who give a hundred, who give a thousand, who give this. That wonderful group of people, they began to give and give and we kept giving a faith promise. Hallelujah to God. But it got difficult. There was so much to tell you. It got worse and worse. We got halfway done with the building and morale seemed to drop. It was everybody working on the building. It was every week working on the building and giving for the stuff coming in. Long story short, short, we just ran out of money and we ran out of zip. And I had given enough times that I had actually borrowed money on my credit cards and filled them up. I had no more to lead the pack and give. I had a 10-year-old Cadillac I bought from my dad. I remember the day it broke down. The transmission exploded. The radiator exploded. I took it in. And I thought, this is great. I'm the pastor of Calvary Tabernacle, and I can't afford to fix my own car. I didn't have money to fix my own car. I was so defeated. My wife knows. I cried like a baby. I went to the prayer room, and I said, God, I've been the biggest fool on earth. But God always sees your heart, and God always sees your motive. And that day, a businessman on North Keystone says, Reverend, you got time for lunch? I said, sure. I met him at Shapiro's. We sat down, and he said, I can't get you out of my mind. For three weeks, you've been in my mind. Would you take a little ride with me? Sure. He owned a funeral home. We went up, and he said, I bought these 20 Cadillacs, and, and I, I want you to pray over them. Would you do that? I did the God will bless my business. Sure, I will. And I'm just going through this Baptist prayer over his Cadillacs. And suddenly he turns around and he said, you see the maroon one over there, the 1985 DeVille? Now, folks, my car was broke down. I was borrowing a car, and I couldn't fix my car. And he said, that maroon Cadillac, do you like that with the leather seats? Do you like that, 1985 DeVille? It was brand new. He said, God told me to hand you these keys. It's paid for, and the insurance is paid for for the next year. Now, what do you think happened to my faith? Give and it shall be given unto you. 
good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men, shall men give to your bosom. I'm telling you, I got in my new Cadillac and I went to the church to call my dad and a few people and suddenly a banker's at my door. He said, Rebel Arson, you got a few minutes? Sure, what's up? He said, the bank board looked at your building the other day. Man, you are serious. You've got it half done. If you come down to the bank on Monday, you sign papers, we're giving you the full amount of the load. <laughs> the full amount of the load. <laughs> Hallelujah. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll be with you even to the end of the world. He is able to make all grace abound toward you. All right. Brother Lehman, missionary, empty one out, walk around. There's folks out there. Hallelujah. You want to start signing a check. You want to give 100, 500, 1,000. We want to call your name out and rejoice with you. They're going to come and, and help to give somebody that can't get out of their pew. We all need to take an inventory. Look at me tonight, folks. Take an inventory tonight. Am I giving? Am I living dynamically or not giving dynamically? For as God has prospered me, the Bible says in Mark 12, 41 through 44, if you would get that, we are to give to God as he has prospered us. We are to give to God proportionately. Oh, my God in heaven. I'm going to find everybody in this place tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You think you're broke? You think you got it rough? You look at this little old lady. The Bible says that Jesus sat against the treasury and beheld. He watched how people cast their money into the treasury. He's watching every single person here tonight. He's watching your attitude. He's watching how you receive the word. He's watching how you're responding to the word. He's watching, Brother Kennedy, how much you love God. He's watching how you give tonight. And he stood by the treasury, Brother Booker, and he looked how people cast the money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a poor. The Bible never exaggerates. There came a poor widow. And she threw in two mites. You, you, can, you can make your check for a week from now. I think they'll let you do it a month from now if you want to give $1,000. And the widow cast more in. The widow cast more in than all they which have cast in the treasury. Ford Motor guy went by, threw his 1000 bucks in. Chevy guy went by. Hallelujah McDonald's Burger guy went by. Shakey's Pizza guy went by. But Jesus was transfixed on a little old woman who gave, listen, the Bible says she gave of her living. Yeah. She gave of money she needed that week for Bobby Pins, hairspray, nylons, and lunch. She gave of the money she had to have for her own self. But there's something about it. When you go a little bit farther, the Bible says Jesus went a little bit farther. It says, praise God, that there was two men, Peter, James, and John, three men that went with Jesus a little bit farther. Jesus went into the, the, the Gethsemane Garden, and he went a little bit farther. Folks, oh God of the Holy Ghost, help me to say this. Sometimes it's logical. Sometimes it's reasonable. But sometimes it's it goes beyond your ability to give. Sometimes it takes what you need for this week. And God says, I see the dynamics of heaven upon that person. Dynamic living produces dynamic giving. The key was her heart. Hallelujah. What did God see in Acts chapter 10? Let's say you're a sinner here tonight. Let's say you're a visitor here tonight. Listen to me. Listen to me. It says that there was a man named Cornelius. How many believe that? He was a Gentile. He wasn't a Jew. He opened the door for someone to get the Holy Ghost at this camp meeting tonight. He was the Gentile. What did he do? The Bible says he prayed much. The Bible says that he loved much. The Bible says he supported things. But if you look, he gave much alms. That's the last thing it mentions, Brother Grant. 
He gave much. He's a sinner. He's a Roman. He's a Catholic, whatever he is. God said, I can use that guy. He's a giver. And he opened up his door to a Pentecostal apostolic powerhouse to come in there. And while Peter was preaching, the Holy Ghost fell. He was a devout man who feared God and prayed to God and gave much alms. A giver, a giver, a giver opened up the dynamics of heaven. Listen to me, please. The average American, the average American will make in your 60 years or your 50 years of working, you will make over $1 million. Some more, some less. Count it up. Two things God is going to judge you for when you see him face to face. Two things over your lifespan. Number one, what you did with your time and what you did with your ability to give. God puts a million dollars in your hand in 50, 60 years. A million dollars. He's checking records. Are you giving dynamically? Are you getting out of your budget once in a while and giving by faith? Say praise the Lord, everybody. Dynamic living is produced by dynamic giving. The average American tonight dies. He dies and cannot afford to have a burial. Doesn't have enough money left. It's all about first fruits. Your heart, your direction. It's firstness. Is he the Lord of your life? Words are cheap. Jesus, I love you. Words are cheap. Oh, God. Speak to me tonight. It's about firstness. I want to tell you that it's a beautiful thing to realize that God sees the firstness in your heart even before you do anything. Let me just touch on this as I wind to a close. Remember Abraham? He had a nephew named Lot, kids, nephews, nieces, a confederation of armies got together and swooped down and took all Abraham's family. Took them all. Abraham said, what do I do now? He told everybody holding a broom and a rake and a saddle harness, come over here to the shed, get a spear, get a knife, get a shield, and get your horse saddled up. We're going after him. You don't think that was tough? That was tough going. They rode through deserts and cactus and coyotes and it was dry desert and heat, and they finally caught up with that army. But God was with Abraham, and they swooped down with 318 servants and completely destroyed those armies, and God gave them everything back that they had lost, and he got Lot back and got his family back. Would you say praise the Lord? Lord. Hebrews 7, 7 says that we are blessed of the greater. The lesser is blessed of the greater. Listen to me what's, what's going on in this service right now. Abraham was going back to his home, excited, happy, fulfilled. He got everybody back. But not only that, they got jewels and gold and diamonds and silver from those kings that they defeated, and their saddlebags were hugely filled, and they were blessed. And as they came back, they went through a little town called Salem that would one day be called Jerusalem, and they stopped there, and there was a fellow that came out of the temple, and he was called Melchizedek the priest. He had no mother and he had no father. You figure out who he was. He came out with bread and wine and cheese, and he blessed Abraham and his whole family, and he put a spiritual blessing on them, and Abraham was so excited. He was so blessed, he said, take 10% of everything that's in the saddlebags that God has blessed us with and give it to that man of God called Melchizedek. You know what happens when you come to church? You know what happens when you come to a camp meeting? People have been half beat to death by life. You're fighting traffic. You're fighting your job. You're fighting sickness. You're fighting the world. And you come to the house of the Lord and you've worked all week and you're, you're bummed out. You've got to know that there's something that's greater than you. 
You've got to know that the greater can bless the lesser. That when you walk into the house of God, your, your tragic cancer can be healed in this building. You can be set free. You can be redeemed. You can be absolutely anointed and healed. Your children, oh God, listen to me. Hallelujah. It's not just about money tonight. It's about firstness. When you give with this kind of dynamic, it can cause your children to be saved. It can cause your daughter to marry the right person. It can cause revival in your church. It can cause revival in the house of God and in your altar. Would somebody clap your hands to the Lord? There are real reasons that churches and districts are not under a corporate blessing. If you really believe the Bible, say I do. If you really stand behind the word of God, say amen. amen. They were all the bride. They were all the family of God. They were all baptized by one spirit and one body. They were all fitly framed together by the same doctrine. They were all baptized in Jesus' name. And God sent quail and manna out of heaven. Their shoes lasted 40 years. Their clothes lasted 40 years. It was a corporate blessing of God. Do you understand why I'm saying how important it is for 100% of everybody here to give something tonight? Because one deceiver... One lagging person, one unbeliever, one Achan can affect the whole camp. The point is there's a little Achan in all of us. First fruits are never lost. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Give to God your tithe. Listen, what do you mean by first fruits, folks? A lot of folks think I'm going to pay my tithes. No, 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 no. It's I'm going to give God his tithe before I pay all state or my groceries or anything else. It is first fruits. God, you are so first. I'm going to write the check before I do anything else. I'm going to pay my tithe first. I'm going to write it out because, God, you are the Lord of my life. You're the Lord of my life. I'm going to be done in five minutes, but I want you to listen to this. In 1976, I was assistant David Gray in San Diego, California. I made $170 a week. Woo! I was privileged and honored to be with the man of God. My wife and I loved Brother Gray. Now I pastor his church. He put his life's work in my hands. And I remember I was the assistant pastor, the choir director, the Sunday school director, the teen leader, and the youth choir director for 150 bucks a week. And stress would build up. There was a place in town. I'm winding to a close. I need an organ player, but watch me. Hallelujah. I remember there was a place in town called the Chicken Pot Pie House. The Chicken Pot Pie House was awesome. $2.95, homemade in the oven chicken pot pie, Mashed potatoes with chicken gravy, fresh vegetables, chicken soup, one of them beautiful yeast rolls with butter dripping on it, and fresh apple pie a la mode and coffee for $2.95. 1976, the place was always packed. It had old people in it all the time because it was really good for the budget. I went in there one day upset, steam coming out my ears, upset about something. My wife was sitting there. I sat next to a couple, and the divider on the tables, they put these little short dividers on the table. You're really sitting at the same table as someone else, but the divider psychologically tells you they're at a different table. (laughs) I was taking a bite of chicken pot pie, and I looked over the divider because I'm extra tall. I saw the ugliest woman I've ever seen in my life. She looked like she kissed a light socket and her her hair was horrible. And then I looked at her husband. He'd make a freight train take a dirt road. He was so ugly I lost my appetite. 
And God smote me. You arrogant, prideful preacher. And I stopped and I said, how are you doing, folks? How's it going? I couldn't stand and look at him. Who are you? I was a San Diego PD motorcycle division. I tried to stop a fight between a man and a wife injuring children. The man shot me in the face. I was so smote. 150 a week. I needed money all week. I checked my wallet. I had just enough to pay for my wife and I and he and his wife. I called the waitress over. Give me their ticket. Here's the tip. Don't tell them. I walked out. I felt 10 feet tall. It's not a big deal. But a month went by. And this Hall family, Larson family from Superior, their daughter got married, and he was a millionaire at Brother Grace Church, Alvin Hall. And they had the wedding at the big Coronado Hotel Dell. And my family came, about 16 of them, and I'm, in a, I'm a successful assistant pastor making 150 bucks a week. I said, my family, you're all staying in my house. We packed them on the floor, suitcases and, and, and slumber bags. and e There was people everywhere. And I said, today, I'm taking my family to the chicken pie house. Mom, dad, brothers, sisters, nephews, nieces, I'm taking y'all. I'm buying the chicken pot pie. I'm a successful assistant pastor. We got to the chicken pie house. I didn't know my nephews and nieces. They got extra pie. They got extra alamode. Some of them, it wasn't enough chicken pot pie. They got more chicken pot pie. When I got the bill, the color went out of my face. I didn't have that much money. This wasn't the day of ATMs. and You didn't have credit cards all over the place. I thought, what am I going to do? I don't have enough money. I cannot ask my dad, John Arvid Larson. I cannot ask him to give me a loan to pay for this meal. Oh, honey, give me the checkbook. I can write a hot check. You ever been there? I can write a hot check, and if the check doesn't get back before Brother Gray pays me, oh, my God, I'm walking up to the cash register. Hey, son! Woo! What? Shock me. Son! Were you here about a month ago? Did you sit by an old motorcycle cop shot in the face? Did you buy his dinner? to the owner. I said, uh, yeah. He goes, give me that ticket. This thing's on the house today, buddy. I think that's beautiful. And anytime you walk in here and you let me know that you're in here, I'm going to take real good care of you. Because dynamic living... It's produced by dynamic giving. Hallelujah. I wonder how many people will walk down to this altar right now and begin to thank God of what he's going to do over your hundredfold. I wonder if you could get out of your pew and walk down here right now. I wonder if people that haven't moved in this place can walk down here right now and we fill this altar with praise and thanksgiving. I wonder if the praise singers could come. I wonder if the worshipers could come. We need to give God glory tonight. Lord, this is the 50th Jubilee. I've come to praise God. I've come to give you my best worship. I've come to give you my best praise. I've come to give you all the glory. You have blessed Wisconsin for 50 years. Oh, Lord, take this offering now. Take this offering now and multiply it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, take this offering and multiply it. Let's begin to sing and let's begin to praise and let's begin to worship the living God. Lord, take this offering and multiply it. I pray that you would move on people that have not yet given. I pray that you would move on adults and backsliders and visitors that have not yet given. Move on, Sister Larson. Move on, preacher's wives. In Jesus' name.